even though imatinib has improved the prognosis of patients with CML dramatically, we still have about 4% of patients with CML every year who develop resistance or intolerance to imatinib therapy. So cumulatively, with a 5 to 10 year follow-up, you may end up with about 20 to 40% of patients who will need different forms of therapy other than imatinib. There are several interesting studies which are coming out at ASCO. Um, the rationale behind all of these studies is to try to use the more potent second-generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors up front. The endpoints of the studies have been different. In previous uh, publications, uh, several investigators had shown that the incidence of either complete cytogenetic response or major molecular response at 12 months major molecular response being defined as a three log reduction of the disease. Uh, those two endpoints have been associated with differences in long-term outcome. The first study is the nilotinib versus imatinib study where the primary endpoint of the study is the incidence of major molecular response. And in that study, the investigators have shown that treatment with nilotinib was associated with significantly higher incidences of both major molecular response as well as of complete cytogenetic response at 12 months. In addition, they showed a very important clinical endpoint, which is a reduction in the rate of transformation to accelerated or blastic phase with nilotinib therapy. So this is a very solid study that shows with a short-term follow-up that nilotinib is more effective than imatinib in newly diagnosed patients with chronic myeloid leukemia. In addition, when you look at the side effect profile, many of the disturbing side effects, which, can, which do not have necessarily to be severe, but they could be clinically disturbing in terms of quality of life, like fluid retention or weight gain or periorbital edema, uh, those side effects on average were less frequent with nilotinib than with imatinib. There was another study comparing another potent second-generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor, desatinib, to imatinib. In that study, the primary endpoint was the incidence of complete cytogenetic response at 12 months. And in that study, we were able to show also that uh, the desatinib therapy was associated with a significantly higher incidence of complete cytogenetic response but also of major molecular response at 12 months. And also, the same as with nilotinib therapy, the satinib therapy was shown to reduce the incidence of transformation with the short-term follow-up. The satinib therapy, on average, was also less toxic than with imatinib therapy. So again, the disturbing side effects like fluid retention, muscle uh, spasms, aches, myalgias, periorbital edema, weight gain, nausea, and other such findings were less frequent with desatinib on average than with imatinib therapy. Currently, those two uh, second-generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors are so potent that it's going to be difficult to uh, develop um, combinations up front, although we're thinking about uh, them. Uh, there are some interesting compounds such as bosutinib, which is also a SARC-able inhibitor, similar to desatinib, uh, where the randomized trial of bosutinib versus imatinib has been completed, so we'll see the results in August. We're starting to work on third-generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors, meaning agents that suppress the T315I mutation, which is not suppressed with the second-generation TKIs. So we're working with a compound called AP24534 and another one called DCC2036. Both of these agents are still in phase one studies, but they are showing very encouraging activity. So it is possible that in the future, we will take those third generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors into the frontline setting in patients with high risk CML. Uh, the other important question is whether we can eradicate uh, minimal residual disease so that we can stop therapy and be able to declare cures in many of these patients. So we're starting now to work on drugs that are able to kill the dormant stem cell. And many of these drugs are old agents like Pegasus or 
decitabine or omacetaxine, the new name for homoharingtonin. Some of those are new agents like uh, BCL2 inhibitors and others. So, uh, so we're working on several new leads, both in the frontline setting as well as in the setting of eradication of minimal residual disease.